Hi guys! Uh, for this week's tutorial, I'm going to be showing you how to paint a Napoleonic uh, French uh, cuirassier figure. Uh, now the reason that I chose this one is uh, varied. Uh, firstly, it was because I've had at least one viewer ask about this unit. Uh, secondly, it's been a little while since I did any Napoleonic figures, and also even longer really since I've done any cavalry. And then thirdly, because the holidays are coming up, I'm going to be busy and traveling a lot. So it's going to be handy to have something that I can kind of break down into several parts for you. Now the figure I'm going to be using is this one. Uh, I'll try to show you. Here's the horse and here's the rider. These are, of course, by the Perrys because their Napoleonic range is just really uh, hard to beat. This is a Cuirassier officer figure. Now, I will tell you that... Perry's make both a metal and plastic um, version of their cuirassiers. <clears throat> and normally I would recommend the metal figures just because I like metal a little bit better. But in this case, I would say, uh, if, especially if you're going to be painting just normal trooper figures and not the officers, definitely go for the plastics. Firstly, because the uh, plastic set is a lot cheaper, you get a lot of figures for your money, but also because it's multi-purpose, uh, because you can make either cuirassiers or carboniers with that set. Now, the other thing, <clears throat> which is really the critical point here, is that there are some differences in how the metal cuirassiers are produced. Namely, it seems that a lot of them are sort of sculpted in one piece. So you've got the writer on the horse, you can't separate them. Uh, this is obviously not the case with the officer and command models, but the normal figures are, yeah, a lot of them seem to be all attached. And that is a problematic because it makes them more difficult to paint, for one thing. And for another, it seems to cause there to be mold lines on the figures in unfortunate faces. I worked on one some time ago, and there was a mold line running right down the middle of the figure's face, and it really messed it up and to the point where I just couldn't like paint it in a way that looked good anymore and I actually ended up kind of giving up on it because the mold lines were so tragic in that case. So uh, that's why I would stay away from <laughs> the uh, metal models, you know, unless you want to, you know, have some officers or maybe mix in a few into your unit, but then I would say check them all really carefully first. So. Uh, what we're going to do now is, this week, I'm going to be showing you how to paint the uh, Cursier's horse, and because it's heavy cavalry, it's going to be a nice dark brown color. And then next week, I'm going to release a video which will go into more detail about painting the Cursier's uniform. First of all, here are all of the paints that you are going to need for the first part of this model, and by that, I mean the horse and his tack. Uh, I'll show you the colors that you need for the Cuirassier himself in the next video. This is not the first time I've painted a brown horse. Uh, I did a tutorial earlier on painting a Napoleonic Hussar, and I also gave that unit a brown horse. Uh, so what I want to do here is try to show you a slightly different type of brown, I guess, or a way that you can paint brown so that you can get a little bit of a variety. Now, I'm just going to start out by base cutting the horse flesh here. You don't have to be very precise at all. As a matter of fact, you just want good coverage. And my base coat here is going to be a German camouflage black brown. I want to really work from a dark base here with this horse. So once the uh, German camouflage black brown is dry, I'm going to put a really heavy, generous wash of known oil from Citadel all over this model. Now I'm going to start highlighting, which is a pretty sort of slow and drawn out process with horses. My very first shade here is a mixture of the German camouflage black brown and some Vallejo chocolate brown. Uh, at this point you don't have to be too precise uh, with the color. You're going to want to layer it on most areas of the horse. You don't have to worry too much yet about really building up highlights. So you know this step should go fairly quickly. Thank you. 
My next highlight level here is going to be pure chocolate brown and you'll notice I'm getting a little bit more specific with where I apply the paint and trying to sort of gradually define some individual uh, musculature on the horse. You'll notice that the steps that I'm going to be taking with the brown are going to be very gradual. I'm not going to make any really big jumps just because when you've got big surfaces like this where you've got a blend, it's a lot easier if you make your steps gradual. I mean, it's true, it'll take you somewhat longer because you have to apply maybe more layers. But on the other hand, uh, when you have to blend two colors that are very uh, different from one another together, that also arguably takes a really long time and is in many ways, I'd say, harder and more frustrating. So I prefer to do it this way with just lots of kind of more subtle colors layered over one another. And now I'm just continuing the process I already started. I'm now going to sort of build up highlights on the horse further by mixing some Vallejo German Camouflage Pale Brown into my chocolate brown. And the first time I do that, it's going to be a fairly subtle step, again, as I said, because we want to keep these steps very, very gradual. At this point, I'm really starting to pick out and define individual muscle bulges and parts of the horse's anatomy. And here I've just made an even lighter shade with even more of the German camouflage pale brown in it. I'm really starting here now to focus on uh, things like the joints of the horse's legs, uh, around his muzzle and eyes, and especially sort of on the top of his flanks because you'd expect a lot of light to be hitting there. And I just look for any sort of bulges or sort of shapes that you can really see in the horse. And I really just try to pick those out now and sort of emphasize and uh, define them. And you can see I kind of apply the paint again, like always when I'm blending towards the center of those areas and then sort of pull it out. And I'm trying to do it kind of lightly. I'm not going real heavy all at once. I apply sort of a thin layer, blend it out, and then I build it up a little bit, kind of as necessary, really. As I sort of said earlier, it's easier to apply lots of thin, gradual layers and build them up. Uh, it's also something that's particularly critical, I should say, on a horse figure like this one, because um, sort of, I think horse, horse flesh looks best when you get a subtle buildup of color on it. You don't want really harsh, hard contrasts going on because it, it's, it's not pretty. You just really need to blend everything out and make you sure that you get these very sort of nice, soft uh, transitions. So that's really another reason why that whole very sort of slow layering process is really particularly critical when you're painting animals. I'm now getting pretty close to be do being done with highlighting the horse. This uh, color I'm applying here is just pure uh, German camouflage pale brown. Uh, what I like to do here, kind of to finish off, is I look for the areas that I've already really picked out and kind of made brighter. And I just use this sort of along the edges of those areas, really lightly sort of blending sort of inward almost just to make the areas kind of more defined so you really see a sort of you can see I'm making it so you can see there's a real clear edge to some of those muscles and this is also the point where you can use these light uh, paints too to kind of make the horse look a little bit shiny because uh, short-haired horses like this that are well groomed and healthy they tend to gleam a little bit light will catch their coats and they'll kind of shine and then you'll see that especially in areas where they've got like bulging muscles so you can kind of use those uh, uh, these light colors I should say to really try to uh, do that a little bit just in some you know areas that you select you don't want to do it everywhere but you know just by accenting the areas where light is hitting and kind of 
you know, building it up extra bright, you can kind of get that shiny effect. And my absolute last layer here is the German Camouflage Pale Brown, now with just a little bit of ivory mixed into it from Vallejo, and that just is to get an even lighter shade. And this is really being used very sparingly. This is really an edge highlight, just doing what I was doing before. Really, in this case, it's really to emphasize that sort of shine, especially on the flanks and on the really, you know, the muscles and the legs, and just really, really put a super emphasis on those areas. Now I'm going to work on the horse's hooves, um, eyes, and nostrils. This is just a fairly quick process. Uh, I'm going to base coat them here with a mixture of black and a little bit of German camouflage brown just to warm it up slightly. I'm going to also paint that color in the eye sockets, the whole eyeball, and inside the nostrils. You don't really want to paint any whites in the horse's eyes. You just want to fill it all in with black because if you see a horse, you're mostly just going to see its pupil. You're not going to see the white of its eyes unless the horse is terrified or angry or something. And nine times out of ten, that's not going to be the case. You don't want to kind of overplay that. So I'm just kind of, you know, detailing those areas. I'm then going to do just a little bit of quick highlighting on the hooves here. And I'm going to do that just by taking a little bit of ivory and mixing it into that shade I already created. And just creating a, a couple of highlight levels, which I'm going to apply sort of very gradually, sort of along the edges of the hoofs. And try to leave it so there's a clear dark band between sort of the base of the hoofs and sort of the area where they meet with the legs. And you can, you know, you can make an extra high highlight here if you want and sort of get some little slight uh, shine on the hooves here and there if you like. Uh, I'm also going to take some of the ivory while I've got it out here and I'm just going to use it to make a tiny little dot in the horse's uh, eyes, uh, which will kind of serve as a reflection and just kind of really bring them to life so they don't, he, the horse doesn't look dull and dead. You can really potentially go crazy painting a horse's mane and tail because there's just all this sort of hair sculpted in there. And if you try to paint every single string, you'll drive yourself nuts. I mean, don't get me wrong. I'm sure if you did it well, you could get good results. But I'm just not interested in that nine times out of ten. So my approach here is to apply sort of a light overbrush to the uh, um, sort of mane and tail. Uh, first, using um, Droban Camouflage Black Brown and then following up with chocolate brown in the areas where I kind of expect light to be hitting. Once that's done, I'm going to take some Agrax Earthshade Wash and I'm going to apply it really, really generously to all of the mane and tail area of the horse. Now that normally will take a while to dry, so I kind of sped it up here with my hair dryer. But once it is dry, then I'm, you can go back in with another wash layer. And I'm using Null and Oil now. And I'm not going to apply that all over the mane and tail this time. I'm only going to apply it in areas where I want to emphasize sort of shadow. So really sort of underneath the base of the tail, for example, you can see I'm putting it and sort of at the base of the mane. You can build up a couple layers here as you like. Um, then once that's dry, that's pretty much all I'm going to do. I did go back with some chocolate brown very, very lightly on my brush. Just very subtle, very light over brushing just at the very sort of top of the tail just to add a little bit of extra highlight where the sort of light would be hitting it. Now this next step you don't necessarily have to do, it's kind of up to you, but I wanted to do it kind of just to make the horse a little bit more interesting. Uh, as you know, horses often will have socks on their feet. You'll see white ones, uh, you'll also see black ones, and I noticed on dark brown horses like this, they are often are going to be black socks. The way I approached this was to take some uh, black paint, and I thinned it down quite a bit, more than I normally would, so that it's extra transparent. So you can see when I apply it, it doesn't even really give immediate good coverage uh, to the legs. I want a little transparency. I want a little of the brown showing through, and I want 
more importantly for it to be able to blend more sort of or transition more easily in the edge where it kind of changes between the black and brown so once i put one layer on i can then just kind of go back in with um more black and sort of strengthen the color where it needs to be darker and then i'm going to use a little bit of chocolate brown here and i'm going to sort of mix that in around the edges and that just is again to help sort of smooth the transition between sort of the black socks and the lighter brown of the rest of the horse's uh, skin. Uh, you can even mix in some lighter brown too if you feel like you need to to get a little bit of a better uh, transition. Once I'm done with that, I'm gonna uh, use some German gray here and I'm going to just start highlighting the black socks area of the legs. And I would do this how I would normally highlight any black or gray. So I'm just, like I did with sort of the brown areas of the horse, I'm emphasizing the same parts, but now I'm just using grays instead. And these are fairly small areas, so it shouldn't take you too long. And a lot of them are sort of on the inner legs too. So again, they don't need as much attention. Uh, I, I used the ivory again to lighten my German gray after I put the first layer on and then I just applied some extra sort of highlights to areas where I really wanted some emphasis at following the same rules really as with the brown. Uh, I didn't apply quite so many layers or go into quite as much detail as I did before just because these areas are so much smaller and you're not going to notice it quite as much. The saddle blanket and sort of the so ends of the uh, bedroll at the back are going to be uh, French blue and that's just a very very deep color so I'm making a base coat here that is going to be a mixture of black and dark Prussian blue and then I'm going to go right back in after that with a slightly lighter shade and start highlighting. And I'm going to continue progressively highlighting even further, first with just um, pure dark Prussian blue, and then building it up gradually, uh, first with a mixture of dark uh, Prussian blue and just pure blue, blue from Vallejo, and then finishing off finally with just blue by itself. And you may think, well, dark Prussian blue or blue are really way, way, way too light of colors for painting that French uniform. And you'd be right, but or normally you'd be right I should say but when you're building them up over an almost black base like this and you're applying them in really thin layers you're not going to get that immediate brilliant blue color um, and you can sort of use them to sort of subtly get some highlight tones on the blue without really making it too brilliant. Now I'm going to straight up admit here that I've kind of let myself in for some extra trouble here because I'm painting an officer figure. Uh, the trim on this saddle blanket on the edge of his bedroll is going to have to be silver. Um, and on a normal trooper that would just be white, which would be a lot faster and easier to paint. But with the officer and with silver, well, I mean, you could paint this with metallic paint, but I don't think that would give a very good effect on these areas. So I feel like you really need to go for a uh, non-metallic metal here. So I'm base coating the areas first using um, um, dark blue-gray from Vallejo, and then I'm going to start highlighting. And the first shade that I'm applying here is the dark blue-gray mixed with some silver-gray. Uh, you can see I'm looking for shades here that have sort of a bluish cast to them because I think if you're going to do non-metallic metal silver, you want colors with a bluish cast. And my first base coat, as you can see, is a pretty dark shade, and that's intentional. If I was just painting white, my base coat would have been a lot lighter, but because we're going for non-metallic metal, what the way that you're going to make it look like that instead of just gray or white is by having really big contrast range that it goes from really dark to really light and you have these sort of extreme uh, color fluctuations which is going to make it look like you've got shininess going on and you know that's the hallmark of metal here obviously so after i applied the darker shade i took that next layer and i really applied sort of areas of it sort of and i and sort of started building up but at the same time i'm being careful to leave also sort of darker areas or areas of the darker color especially down in the wrinkles because you really have to still leave those big tonal differences um i'm also then going to move on and now i'm just taking pure uh, silver gray here and doing the same thing i'm building it up 
over top. Um, and with these light colors, they're real transparent, so you can build up several layers, and that's really good because we need to get a lot of different tones going here. So, you know, you can just see I'm just kind of adding more and more layers of the light color and getting some areas extra, extra shiny. But you'll see especially that I leave those extra, extra shiny areas, light areas, next to other areas that are really, really dark. And that sort of really light color next to these areas of very dark color is kind of what's going to make it look a little metallic, I guess. <clears throat> Don't forget, too, that on the end of the bedroll is going to be the number of the units regiment. I'm just doing a first regiment of Curacier's unit here because that's sort of the most classic vanilla variant. So I'm painting a little tiny one on the side of the bedroll and I'm using the same sort of colors that I am for the rest. As you might guess, my last highlight shade on the uh, sort of silver areas is just going to be pure white. And like I did with the gray shades, I'm building it up in a little bit but this is the real key of course to getting it to really look super shiny uh, so you should try to apply the white in real moderation here if you apply too much of it and go too strong or heavy on the white you're going to ruin your sort of shiny effect because you're going to lose the extreme contrast between this really white shade and the really dark base shade so you should think about applying the white as a thin edge highlight where sort of you would expect light to be hitting and sort of bouncing off sort of like the edges of the trim for example uh, and just sort of in the middle in a very small amount of any sort of areas where you were already really building up a lot of bright. Well, that was a real pain in the butt. I'm sorry, I maybe couldn't explain it to you better. It really is very difficult to walk people through uh, painting on metallic metal. You just kind of have to try it out and hopefully look at what I'm doing. Uh, now we've got some other white areas in this model we have to deal with because sort of that fur cover on his saddle is also white. Um, I'm trying to use different shades here to differentiate it a little bit from the non-metallic metal trim. So here I've got some sky gray. I'm going to base coat the fur with that. And I'm also going to use it to base coat that little blanket that's folded over the top of his bedroll. In order to sort of define and get better contrast on the fur, I'm going to take a really, really thin wash of Agrax Earthshade and Nuln Oil here and apply it sort of over that whole area. Now I'm going to start highlighting the, uh, the fur cover and this, the blanket. Uh, I've made a mixture here of the sky gray and some white, and for the blanket, I, or the blank of the fur, what I'm doing is I'm just overbrushing here, so I'm applying paint to my brush, wiping it mostly off, and then sort of lightly going over the whole thing. And I will apply a couple layers here just so I can build it up a little bit and get it brighter um, in areas where I expect to be light hitting. Obviously, like in the middle of the saddle where the guy's going to be seated, that's not even going to be seen in the finished model, so you don't even really have to worry very much about highlighting that. As for that blanket uh, that he's carrying folded up, I'm just going to follow the usual rules for highlighting white things here. So I'm going to apply this color here just straight, sort of building up layers of it to, to, to sort of achieve highlights uh, where I want them. And obviously we're not quite done because now I'm going back in with just pure white and continuing the highlighting process with the blanket. I'm just applying several thin layers and building it up just as I would highlight any other white item uh, so that you get some sort of subtle tones that range between a very sort of light gray and white. And on the fur, I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to really just be overbrushing the white uh, in some areas more heavily than in other areas just to really make it look like some areas are just more highlighted than others, I guess. Uh, the downside to doing this is if, if you go real heavy in some areas, you are going to lose some of that detail we got from the wash. But don't worry too awful much about that. It is something you can kind of go back and correct. And the way I actually correct that is to apply another um, sort of wash 
layer. And I'm using the same blend I had before, but I thinned it down with even more water so it's, it's very, very light because I don't want it to really kind of disrupt that the bright whites I've got too much. I just want to get a little bit more color down in the recesses. Now we're really at the point where we can sort of really start pulling the model together and cleaning up some of the areas that are making this thing look unfinished. So what we've got to deal with now is the um, saddle blanket has sort of red fringed trim on it and there's also sort of a red stripe or sort of patch that's uh, sort of sewn into uh, the blanket there. Uh, I'm base coating all those areas here just using uh, Vallejo black red. And then I'm just going to grab some uh, Citadel Mephiston Red and just start highlighting those areas after I've got a nice uh, heavy base coat going. Uh, this will probably take a couple of layers to build up to kind of reach maximum intensity before you're really ready to move on. And I do follow up here with a final high highlight here, a Citadel Evil Sun Scarlet. And I do just the same thing I did before with the Mephiston Red. I'm going back over those areas and applying several thin layers and just getting nice, bright, intense red where I want it. Really the last thing left to do now on the horse is all the sort of leather and tack. I'm just going to start out by base coating all those areas with just black because on this particular unit all of the straps and stuff were black leather. There's a lot of different pieces on the horse that need to be taken care of so make sure you do remember all of them. Now to highlight, uh, I'm just using German Gray here to start out and I'm going to apply that to most areas of the um, leather straps and tacks and bridles and stuff. I'm just really going to leave the black only sort of as a dividing line or sort of shadow sort of between the separate pieces really. I'm then going to continue my highlight by mixing a little bit of the sky gray into my German gray. Not too much, you want these steps to be gradual so that it's easier to do. What I tr tr tend to do here with these lighter gray shades is on the very small bits I tend to apply just a thin line and on sort of larger straps I tend to apply these lighter grays uh, sort of towards the center and then blend outward so that you can get this idea that there's sort of a shine shine going on it's hitting it lights hitting it it's shining there and then it's sort of darker as you move outward you can really apply as many highlight steps here as you like but you know I advise you to limit it to something reasonable uh, I am going to kind of go ahead after this and make one final highlight for the leather because I don't really like to get too shiny looking and you can see I've made a fairly reasonable sort of medium gray tone and I'm going to use this as an edge highlight because even though it doesn't look that light when you put it on top of this really dark black dark gray that we've got it's going to look pretty extreme so uh, what I'm mostly going to do is sort of run it along the edges of all of the straps and stuff just really thinly to further emphasize them make it look like there's this little extra shine on the edge pieces and also you can in the middle of any areas you're kind of trying to build up and look like you've got a light a lot of light hitting you want to look like there's a shiny effect going on there you can build up a little tiny bit there in the middle and kind of blend it out just to emphasize that a little bit more there's very little metal hardware on this horse's uh, uh, bridle and harness and what there is as far as I can tell should be sort of steel or silver in this case so I've made a base coat that's a mixture of German gray and Vallejo air steel and I'm just gonna really quickly put it on some buckles and on sort of the bit there and then I'm gonna go ahead and take just the pure Vallejo air steel and just kind of 
daub that on there to get an extra bright shine. Okay, so here is our finished French Napoleonic uh, Curacier's horse. And yes, this whole video, we just painted one horse and it took quite a while. I guess that emphasizes just how long cavalry can take to paint well and more specifically how long uh, it takes to paint uh, French uh, Napoleonic cavalry well. And you'll notice we used an awful lot of colors for something that seems fairly straightforward and yeah. Again, you want to do a good job, it isn't going to be quite so simple as you might think. Uh, that aside, I'm very, very happy with how this horse came out, particularly uh, the contrast on the horse's skin. I think there's a lot of great uh, light effects going on there, and I'm very pleased with this sort of combination of black and brown that I achieved on the figure. The rest of it is pretty straightforward, and a lot of it is not even going to show once we get our um, cursor mounted on the horse. So, you know, that's always an advantage when it comes particularly to painting sort of the saddle blanket in that area. And if you're not quite happy with how it looks once you've got your guy on. You can always go back in at that point and maybe touch some things up and add some extra uh, contrast where you think it's needed. So I hope you enjoyed this video. Uh, as always, please leave me a comments, uh, share it with friends, like it of course, and uh, subscribe to my channel if you have not Got, gotten a chance to do so already. As I mentioned at the beginning, this is part one of a two-part series. We obviously haven't tackled the Curacier himself, and we will be doing that in next week's video. So if you want to see how this whole thing turns out, uh, be sure to uh, tune in next time.